Scott, also known as the little guy, the guy on the left, the silent one, has long-lasting COVID symptoms and still cannot fully taste or smell. Hashtag, trust Bart. Hey, it's the Scott's Test Dummies. I'm Scott. Bart! We got a first edition Westland called Calaire. We think, and we're going to test it! Clipped style. American single malt style. Love the box. All right, uh, Super Scotch God shout out to John Ingman. He Ooh. had sent us, well, he sent us a few Westlands. He's out in that area. I love the Ingman. He knows the distillery real well. Very uh, well. Has I, invited us out there. I think he slept in it a couple times. That could be. He's got a little hammock around a barrel. Yeah. <laughs> it, his name's on the wall in the bathroom. Yeah, he just hangs out for there. For a good time called wait, John. That's right. First of all, before we get into that, look at this box real quick. I love it. It's almost got like the diver down symbol. When I was scuba diving, you got a little flag that goes up. I just love this box. It's gorgeous. So I do have some notes over here, an email that John sent in reference to this. I have opened this and tested it. Ooh, I have not. Uh, disclaimer still, Charging not fully part. back from COVID last October, eight months in. I have most of my palate back, but not very much of my smell. And what does that mean? Hashtag trust Bart. Woo, or I'll rip your arms off like a Wookiee. Right here. From Who's John Ingman. Uh, available worldwide starting May 1st. Starting? Collier or Collier edition one. The first edition of Collier marks a monumental step forward for not just Westland, but the whiskey industry as a whole. This is the first and what will be an ongoing annual inquiry into unique varieties of barley Ooh. bred outside the commodity system with flavor first as a goal. Ooh, I like that. Collier edition one is made with the varietal that began it all, Alba, a six row winter barley and intentionally matured and only used casks to relegate the oak influence to a supporting role nice. and focus the attention on the grain itself. Uh, retail is approximately $150. Ooh, uh, really? It is 50% ABV. From the uh, the grain bill is Skagit, Skagit Valley right on, right on. Malting Alba. Skagit, Skagit, Skagit. Skagit. Uh, 2,893 bottles available. Wow. Oh, here we go. Colère, from a Latin verb meaning to cultivate. Colère. So, pretty cool. Very nice. Meaning, they're not just going and saying, I need 10 bushels of barley by the bulk, which would be that system. They're growing this specifically for what they want. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Growing or, you know, single farm sourcing. Sure. Right. I mean, they're not literally, you know, but yeah. I love that. All right. Now, my allergies have been acting up a little bit, but the nasal passages are clear. But you may hear that a couple times. I got malt jumping right Ooh, out yeah. of the glass Ooh, at me. Ooh, I went in. My eyes got watered. <laughs> went in a little heavy with the sniff. Woo. Oh, yeah. Fruits. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's a dusty barley. Do you get a little cherry? I'm getting malt, and my nose is limiting me past that. Yeah, I got cherry curling all around there. Ooh, it's like a cherry pie. I even have to do your open mouth. That's the breathing, way to do it. Circular, circular breathing, breathing technique. Mm. But nope, maltiness. Yeah, heavy malt and a cherry pie with that. Uh, uh, not a graham cr cracker crust. What's the little? Uh, Pie crust, just that drier kind of pie crust mm -hmm. on it. The flaky, flaky uh, crust, whatever they made, call that. Made with flour and Crisco. I like the way you shorten it. Wow, plugging up those arteries. Do it, hey! It's all about the cherry pie. I do get a little bit of a citrus, a fruitiness, but that's about it. I can't nail it down past that. There's a sweet, sweet citrus in there, lighter. Nice, yeah. I get tons of cherry. And then that sweetness that rolls around everything. And then that, that kind of dusty barley. Very nice. Very nice. I 
get your point at somebody. Nice mouthfeel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Malty. Mm, lemon. Yeah. Ooh. Vanillas. Citrus. Fruits. Powdered sugars. Yeah, a little marshmallow cream. Um, huh. The, uh, the finish, I get a unique note that I sometimes get from like an IPA beer. Mm. Some of that hoppiness. Mm. It's almost like a hoppy floralness in the finish. That's interesting. That was in the finish. Yeah, still there. So some of those hoppy IPA finishes that I would normally get from a beer I'm getting on the finish here. Very nice. The malt is really forward in this. Mm -hmm. um, aging it in the prior filled barrels so that the wood influence is less was it. lesser than the barley influence is paid off here. You're getting a lot of that barley, a lot of that malt. Huh. Very interesting. See, this is why I love what they're doing. The spirit of play and exploration with Westland is awesome. Outpost Range. Westland Outpost Range. Water? Uh, sure. American single malt whiskey, of course. 50% ABV love. Um, you know, they're really... I'm, I'm, I've been a huge fan of the American single malt move. Movement. Not just move. Movement. <laughs> Should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> movement. I don't know why I left off the mint, but wow. <laughs> Yet again. Great mouthfeel. Nice finish, too, really. 50% uh, ABV is very nice. Uh, add a drop of water here water here, and see what happens. They but. put right on the back of the label, uh, non-chill filtered, no coloring added, which is, you can see that color in there. I mean, look how nice that is. So you know you got no color added. Very, very nice. And a great presentation. Thoughtfully made is imprinted on the bottle. 49 months. So four years, one month old. It's pretty really? young. Yeah. Huh. And it's showing in the color of that. Be a natural color. You see that even using the prior filled barrel, it's not drawing much character from that. Not much color coming out of the wood. Um, water. Tastes the same. Yeah, I don't get much of a, yeah, that same barley open, the same uh, finish uh, with the IPA maltiness is there for me. That lingers. It's weird because that nose, I still get those cherry notes, but there's no like cherry flavor on the, on the, uh, the palate. Just on that nose. That's a nice nose, though. Yeah. I'm looking for my palate being muted. I'm not getting it. I've given the notes that I'm getting. True. Not getting any more. Well, I think that's all. I mean, not it was a nice range, but... I think I might even add just another drop just to bring it down even a little more. i got a couple more sips here. And it's see. like a sweet barley. And it's very... Yeah, that I mean that malted barley is is on the forefront here, um, and I remember when we were first early in our whiskey experience, um, you know sometimes we didn't know how to pick out that barley mm -hmm. that malted taste. Yeah, well you was getting it before I was. I can remember. And Tomatin 12. Yes, that's exactly. Was the first one where yep. I go, I got the maltiness on yep. this one. I get what you're saying. Yep, that's exactly where I was headed. Was It was that Tomatin 12 where I first was like, I got it. I understand and recognize the malt influence, which of course is on the forefront here. If you like those malty flavors, you're going to love this. Cause you know what? What? Add another drop of water. Okay. I get a little bit, this will sound weird, I get a little bit of, on the taste, I get kind of the smell that you'll get from Play-Doh when you open mm. that up. Mm. I don't know what how to explain that or why that is. So it's not on the nose, but on the taste, I kind of get that, that Play-Doh-y uh, smell, but on my 
taste. All right. Mine has to be down, I think, a third drop of water. And mine has to be down about 40 to 43% ABV. And I think it actually was pretty nice. It brought out a lot more of the creams. Um, I guess kind of a, more of a custard yes. type note. I'll, I'll go with you there exactly. Yeah, a creamed custard. So sweet, creamy custard. I actually took out some of that alcohol burn, which I guess you would expect when you're adding water. But actually, that's pretty nice right there. That's very nice. I thought it was good at 50, but I do like it there. Huh. You're right about the custard. It, 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 it eased up on the, the mouth burn, I would actually say. There was a little bit of burn at 50%. We're, that, we're past that. <laughs> we're into Copy. more of the, the creams and the malt and the citrus coming out. So Yeah, water... At first, I, you're, I didn't think one drop of water changed it much. Right. I would agree that the second drop there um, brought out more of those creaminess, custardy notes. Well done. Thank yeah. you. Um, Sometimes not just one drop, but dose. Not an ofi- official score because of my palate and nose, but it's a, it's a 90 to 92, somewhere in that range, it huh. feels like. I was going to give it an 89. Um uh, I enjoy it a lot. That's good. Yeah. It's very good. Uh, $150, he said, was retail on it. Uh, that's a little pricey. Yeah. Uh, but when you get into the, uh, you know, when there's... Experiment. Well, the experiment yeah. and the control of that yeah. barley um, probably is driving some of that. Right. So. Yep. You're using the, uh, the uh, prior fill barrels. You're going with what sounds like a, maybe even a particular request to a farmer. With a specific barley, I get it. Uh, but yeah, it's a little pricey, but delicious. So I like that with the water for I sure. I love this. Yeah, to me, it was great, neat, but it definitely opened up some more things uh, in that smooth custard style with the water added. 100%. Okay. All right, we got, uh, let's see. First of all, have we had any new patrons that no. we're going to shout out? Nope. We need to shout some names. So if you like the show, you like what we're doing. If you love a long test it, <laughs> go to Patreon and uh, and help support the show. So we'll yell it's, your name. It's very divisive. I don't think so. I think even it's the ones that don't necessarily. I, I think there's a bunch of people in the middle that are like, cool, signature. Then there's the lovers of it that are like, yeah. Then there's the people that like to watch you, just your face. Uh, I, the one guy described it as your dead eyes. That you was did the a, best. Yeah, it, it was, was the best, best dead, dead eye eyes. you've done. And then someone else counted that it was 25 seconds long, and I think they said, yuck. <laughs> yuck. So, yeah, there you go. So, this is what it is. What are we? Which one are we referencing? Because they should go back and see it. It's the LaFroy Sherry, Sherry, yeah, Sherry Oak Cask. Uh, if you want to see a very long test it and a dead Dead face, what do they call it? Dead eyes. Dead, dead eyes, pan. dead pan. You can go watch that, and uh, you'll see it really quick. <laughs> go to scotchtestdummies.com. You can pick up some of our coins and glasses, shirts, hats. We got droppers. wood staves with burn stuff on it. Help support the show. Go to patreon.com. Look up Scotch Test Dummies. That's right. And you can support us for a dollar a month or $5, $10, whatever, however much you want to give. We, it's cost of a cup of coffee an hour. There you go. We still got some of these uh, Salute to 2020 coins on the back. Not office friendly, so we won't show that. But if you go to the merch site, you can see what's on the back of there. It's the Lone Soldier, as you like to call it, the Clyde. Yep. Clyde the Orangutan. <laughs> uh, scotch it. You scotch gods. Slauncher. Dummies. Dummies.